I was telling the children about the signs of the church, I remember something that occurred to me when I was in seminary. And uh, on the second year, we were supposed to be tasked to a church and help a pastor. Uh, and then uh, around April or May, we were uh, ready because we had taken preaching classes. So, so the pastor was supposed to uh, let us preach. So I was all excited. We were three students that go to the same church. You know, so the first one went, the second one went. I said, why do I have to be the last one? Well, that's okay. That's another story. But uh, the last one will be first. Very good. So what happened? You know, in that church, before the sermon, we have the passing of the peace. Okay? So we passed the peace and everything else. And then the pastor came and nodded me. It's time for you. You know, so I came. Put my hands on the pulpit. I looked down. The sermon was not there. <laughs> so I panicked. I go like, what am I going to say? What am I going to do? I'm not good speaking in English. That's my second language. So I didn't know what to do. So I said, let us pray. <laughs> <laughs> and I step out a little bit and I bend over. And I go like, thank you, Lord. <laughs> Somebody will have put it in here. In here. It looks like it just fell. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for having us here today. Everybody kind of wondered why I was so enthusiastic about it, saying that. But anyway, grace and peace to you from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Everybody's familiar with Charles Dickinson's uh, story about a man who was very selfish, Ebenezer Scrooge. We use this term to describe someone who is tight with his or her money and or possessions. Or you are Scrooge. You know, growing up, we used to have another name for that, you know, Maceta. You know, even we have a, even a sign. He used to go like this. Ah, oh, she's lost. <laughs> go like this. So uh, even today, when I'm with the family and we go to a uh, to a restaurant or something, you know, to eat together, and uh, and the person that invited, you know, says, "Okay, start passing the money so I can pay for the bill." You know, we all go. Why don't you pay yourself? You were the one that invited us. <laughs> so perhaps the story of Charles Dickinson describes the unrighteous steward Jesus tells about in Luke's Gospel. Let's look at this parable as a theatrical play. We can either make three scenes in this play. Let's call the first scene the dilemma. This dilemma is presented in the first three verses. Verses 1, 2, and 3. The steward was a house manager. He was in charge of the property of the master. He was called upon to give an account of his management. Why? Because other people were talking about him. And not so good. If he was a good businessman, he will have made a good living for himself from what he said with what he was given to manage. But he was a poor manager and have misused his boss money. And we know he was about to be fired. We are managers of God's household. Even though you don't think that way. 
He has put us in charge of everything in this world. We will be called upon to give an account of how we manage God's possession. <coughs> how are we managing what God has given us? Would it be necessary for God to fire us? <coughs> Maybe. From verse 4 to verse 7, we find the second scene, the decision. We find our main character about to be fired. He didn't know what he was going to do. He couldn't work, probably because he was too old. He was ashamed to beg. He called in those who had an obligation to his master and reduced their debt so they could own him a favor. Owing a favor is common in the business world and even politics. This has been the downfall of many people. Perhaps we have been unfaithful stewards of what God has committed to our care as an individual or even as a congregation. This includes other things beside money natural resources, energy, environment, self, others, even the church, and especially the salvation of the lost. <clears throat> and then we have the final scene in verses 8 to 13, and I call that the devotion. The one central attitude that is shown by the, by the steward in this parable or play is looking out for number one. Me, myself, and I, as my brother says. All that he did was to this end. Don't get confused in the last scene. The boss commended his shrewdness in taking care of himself, but not his dishonesty. This reminds me of my son. You know that we adopted three lovely children many years ago, and they're very tiny. We will shower them with toys, and they were very good sharing between each other. Although I didn't like my son playing with dolls. <laughs> but, that's another story. <laughs> anyway, after a year or so, we thought it was time to have them socialize. You know, that they know us enough that they would feel comfortable to be in a gathering of some kind. So we decided that since our boy was, we got two girls and a boy. So our boy was ready to have his birthday coming up. So we invited all the neighbor's kids, you know, and we have a feast and everything else in our backyard. He was about three going on four. As that, and that's when I saw how selfish my kids were. They would not share with the other kids their toys. I pull aside my son and ask him, why you are sharing the toys with the other kids as you share them with your sisters? 
His response was simple and to the point that these are my toys. They are mine. Sometimes we are like that. We get people new in the church and they bring ideas and stuff like that. And what's the first thing sometimes we say? That's not going to work. This is our church. I was here since the time we do the dirt to build it. <laughs> you know, I've seen it all around all the churches that I've worked with. It's mine. It's mine. Jesus said, we could learn from this steward not to be dishonest, but also about his devotion we have for his master. Our devotion should be direct, directed towards God and not towards ourselves. As we examine our lives in light of the last few verses, can we say that God has confidence in us to do His will here in Florida? Luke sums up this parable in the last verse, just at the last statement. Who do you serve? Money, meaning self, or God? As we get up from our seats in the theater, because we've been watching you know, the play, and pass through the lobby, we look at the sign advertising the play or the parable. And for the first time, we notice the small letters at the bottom that reads, Once you understand, your life will never be the same. And as you go out the door, you say to yourself, 